You know, part of the problem with talking about life after death, part of the problem with talking about our souls, is that the only way to really know whether or not there is life after death is to die, because that's how you get to life after death. And the problem with dying is not a lot of people want to do that, at least quite not yet. And dead people who have gone before us are notoriously bad at reporting their experiences of life after death back to the rest of us who would like to know what's going on, right? There was this philosopher, he, he lived in the 19th century. His name was G.W.F. Hegel. And he had this famous saying. He said, only when the dusk starts to fall does the owl of Minerva spread its wings and fly. Let me unpack this statement for you. Minerva was the Roman goddess of wisdom. And so what G.W.F. Hegel is saying is, it is not at the dawn of our lives, it is at the dusk of our lives that we truly gain some wisdom. Because you see, one of the ways that we gain wisdom is through experience, and you gain experience the longer you live. And so, if you want to be really wise, if you want to have a lot of knowledge, if you want to be really smart, wisdom and knowledge and smarts finally comes on the flip side of an experience and not on the front side of an experience. And so if we apply that to life after death, if you want to know what's really going on, if you want to be really smart about what is to come, that's going to come on the flip side of your death and not on the front side of your death. We might say it like this, hindsight is 20-20, right? But it's really tough when we're sitting here to have hindsight on life after death. All we have is foresight, and I'll tell you, foresight is a lot blurrier than hindsight. And yet, there's this great thing that we believe as Christians. We believe that just because we can't know everything about life after death doesn't mean that there is nothing that we can know about life after death. Because one of the things that we believe as Christians is that the Bible actually can give us, even if we don't have the personal experience, the Bible can actually give us some reliable foresight on what is to come. We can get little glimpses into heaven. We can get little glimpses into eternity from the pages of this book because we believe that this book was written by someone who has firsthand knowledge of what's going on up there. And so today, even though we don't have hindsight, we're going to take the benefit that we have of some foresight, and we're going to look at some scripture that has to do with heaven. And so here is the context of Philippians chapter 1. Paul is trying to preach the gospel, but the powers that be do not like it. So they arrest him. They put him under the guard of an elite force of thousands of soldiers where he can barely make a move. And it is in the midst of this situation that Paul says in verse 18, I will continue to rejoice. I will continue to rejoice even though I am being unjustly persecuted for preaching the gospel. I will continue to rejoice even though I am chained to these real scary looking dudes. I will continue to rejoice even though nothing is going right. I will continue to rejoice, Paul says, no matter what. Now here's the gut check question for you and for me. Could you say these words that Paul says if you were in the situation that Paul was in? Because this is one of the calls that we have as Christians, no matter what, to continue to rejoice. Okay, I have this bag of cookies. You like cookies? See, you should have volunteered. (laughs) You like cookies? Chocolate chips, soft and chewy, okay? These aren't the hard, cheap ones. These are the soft and chewy, delicious, scrumptious um, reduced calorie ones? I'm not sure about that last part, but they're, but, they're, but, but they're pretty good. I'd like to give you these cookies. However, you're going to have to flip for them. Fair enough? Okay, now, I, I like this quarter. This is actually a Texas quarter. It has Texas on the back. So, so you know, I mean, that's, that's some good luck, right? So here's the way this works, okay? We're going to flip for them, all right? And it's heads you win, tails I lose. You like those odds? 
What do you think? Yeah. Heads you win, tails I lose? Yeah, that's Fair right. enough? Yeah. All right, so what do you think? We'll see. It is tails. What does that mean again? I lose. There are the cookies for you. Give them a hand. Now, here's the question. What were the odds of him winning those cookies? Right around 100%. Because it was kind of rigged, wasn't it? See, you should have volunteered. Here's the great thing about our life with Christ. The odds of us winning are 100%. Doesn't matter how the coin lands, heads or tails. Doesn't matter whether you live or whether you die. When you live, you have Christ. When you die, you have gain. You got it good either way. That's the promise of the Christian life. And this is why Paul is kind of torn. He doesn't really know which one he wants. I mean, both are good. He lives and he's in Christ. He dies and he gains eternal life. Both of those are excellent. And so Paul goes on to talk about this internal struggle that he's having between these two options. Philippians 1 verse 22. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two, Paul says. I desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is better by far. Paul says, I'm torn between the two. I got two awesome options. When I live, it is Christ. When I die, it is gain. 